Hey guys, welcome to the 13th video in this flame game development series where we are making Ski Master, a top down vertical scroller about skiing. In the last one, we polished the game a bit by adding a camera shake and some particle effects. And that pretty much completed the basic working prototype that I had in my mind. I think the only major thing that is missing from this prototype is audio. So in this video, I'm going to add a background track and some sound effects to the game. So let's get started. First, we'll have to add the flame audio package in the pubspec file. This package will help us with loading and playing the audio files. Then next, to store the audio assets, we'll have to create an audio folder under the assets folder. This is the default location where flame audio searches for audio files when we try to load them. And obviously, this location will also have to be added to the asset section in the pubspec. Now, to save some time, I've already selected and downloaded the required audio files. So, I'll just paste them under the asset slash audio folder. These assets contain three sound effects and a loopable background track. And this is how they all sound. So these are the audio assets that I'll be using. You can get these files from the GitHub repository of this project linked in the description. But if you want to try out different assets, you can check out the game assets section on itch.io. Here you can just select the type of asset that you are looking for. For example, I'll select music here and you can see that now all the audio assets are listed. You just have to find the correct asset depending on your needs, budget and licensing requirements. Like in my case, I am using one of the tracks from this royalty free music pack. Next, for the sound effects, I always like to use this tool called Chiptone. It is free to use, simple to understand and runs in the browser. You just click on the type of action for which you want an effect and it generates a randomized sound effect for that. The best part is, once you get a somewhat desired effect, you can play around with the wave type, pitch, frequency and a lot more parameters to fine tune that sound effect. But anyways, now back in the code, first thing that we need to do is preload all the required audio files. For that, I'll go to the onload method of the game class. Here, I'll load all the audio files using flameaudio.audio cache. Caching them here avoids any delay in audio playback that might occur due to loading the asset for the first time. And to keep things organized, I'll create static const strings for all the audio assets in this class. This will help us in minimizing the number of hard coded strings in the code base. So once we have all these const strings, we can put all of them in a list and pass it on to the load all method of audio cache. I'll also wait for this to complete here. Now let's see how to play a sound effect. The first sound effect that I'll add is for the player jump. So in the jump method of the player class, I can simply use flameaudio.play and pass in the part to the audio asset that I want to play, which in this case will be jump sfx. Now if you remember, we also have these two value notifiers in the game class that are controlled from the settings menu. Values of these notifiers control if the sound effects and music should be played or not. So to honor these settings, back in the jump method of player, I'll have to check for the value of the SFX notifier. We can access it via the game getter, but first we'll have to specify our game class type in the generic parameter to has game reference mixin. Doing that will allow us to access the public members of our derived flame game class. Now similar to this, in the reset to method, I'll play the hurt SFX. Reset to is the method that is responsible for respawning the player back on the trail. And finally, from the collect method of snowman class, I'll play the collect SFX. Now let's quickly build and run the game to confirm if all the effects are working.
And yes, we do hear all the sound effects correctly. Now let's also check if switching of the sound effects option from settings menu actually stops the effects. And yep, it seems to be working just fine. Okay, so next, let's see how to play a looping background music. My plan is to play the background music only when the level is active. So for that, let's go to the gameplay class. Here, in the onload method, I'll check for the value of music value notifier. And if it is true, I'll play the background track using loop long audio method from Flim Audio. This will start playing the given track on a loop. If I quickly touch this in the game, you should be able to hear the background music. But as you saw, the music didn't stop even when I exited the level. To make it stop, we'll have to store a reference to the audio player object returned by the loop long audio method and manually stop or dispose that object. So to do that, I'll create a new field in this class of type nullable audio player called BGM player. I'll await and store the returned audio player object from loop long audio in this field. Then next, I'll override the onRemove method in this class and dispose the BGM player object. Now let's build and run this to check if it works. And yes, this time the background music stopped when I exited the level. Now technically, we are done with the basic implementation. But since we have already stored a reference to the audio player object in this class, I'd like to show a nice volume feed effect that we can easily achieve. So if you check the docs, you'll notice that the audio player class allows us to change the volume of the audio that it is playing. And the value of volume is always between 0 and 1. This means, if we gradually change the volume of the background music over time, it should produce the volume fade effect. So to achieve that, I'll create three static const members in this class. These will be BGM fade rate, BGM min volume and BGM max volume. I'll set the fade rate to 1, the min volume to 0 and the max volume to 0 0.6. Then in the onload method, I'll set the initial volume for the background music to 0 because I want it to fade in as the level starts. And finally, in the update method, after everything is done, I'll add some code to linearly interpolate the volume from min to max or max to min using the fade rate. So essentially, if the level is completed, I'll make the music fade out. Otherwise, I'll make the music fade in until it reaches the desired max volume. Okay, now let's run the game and see if this works. Yep, and as you can tell, now the music nicely fades in and out at the start and end of each level. So that brings us to the end of this video and this series as well. As I don't have any more planned videos for this project, consider this as the official end of the series. But if something gets highly requested by you guys, I'll surely consider making a video on that. You can drop your suggestions in the comment section or you can ping me on any of my social handles linked in the description. I highly recommend joining my Discord server if you need help with anything about this project. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this and learned something new. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, consider subscribing to show your support, and I'll see you in the next one.